Good evening again from Westminster for the final act of the election of a new Speaker of the House of Commons. And why we're seeing the House of Lords? It's because the Speaker-elect will be brought here, will come up here, process up here, and receive the Queen's approbation for the Commons' choice as Speaker. So Sir Lindsay Hoyle will be leaving the Commons as Speaker-elect. By the time he leaves from the Chamber of the House of Lords, he will be the Speaker. With me, Ian Denyer, who in a couple, till a couple of years ago was the head of the Crown Office in Parliament. We're standing now for the Lord Speaker, or in fact the, the, uh, the Deputy Speaker, will be taking the chair and we will hear from the Lord leader of the House Seal. of Lords, Lady Evans, both both parts. I beg to acquaint the House that a commission has been issued under the Great Seal to several Lords therein naming or named authorising the said Lords to declare in the name and on behalf of Her Majesty Her Majesty's approbation of the choice of the Commons of the Right Honourable Sir Lindsay Hoyle to be their Speaker. Yeah. Well, we've, we took September to get used to prorogation, but approbation, Ian, what is approbation? Uh, approbation is really the, the uh, formal approval uh, of the election uh, that has taken place in the Commons uh, and uh, indicating that Her Majesty approves uh, of the appointment. So the Queen does have to approve the appointment. It's not just enough for the, the Commons to elect a new Speaker. No, that's right. A, a, a draft uh, commission, um, which is the formal document uh, authorising royal commissioners uh, to um, appear in the House of Lords um, uh, to give effect to the royal approbation, the royal approval uh, of the name of the new Speaker. Now, ten years ago, when you were in the job, you had to take the new speaker's name, John Burko, to Buckingham Palace. Now, tell me what exactly you did that night. Well, on, on that occasion, um, uh, the Prime Minister's um, uh, principal private secretary um, and I went to the uh, palace. Uh, and well, first uh, of all, you had to hear the name, didn't you? Yes. So where were you waiting to hear the name who'd, who'd won? Uh, around uh, uh, the back of the speaker's chair. Uh, waiting for the final uh, name to uh, 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 to appear. Uh, on that occasion, there were also uh, several names uh, of uh, uh, candidates for the position. So you got the name, and then you and the Prime Minister's private secretary? That's right. What happened? What did you do then? Uh, went by car to the palace. Um, um, Principal private secretary advised Her Majesty uh, formally uh, of the uh, election result and uh, I took the formal draft um, commission authorising the Royal Commissioners to act in Her Majesty's name in the House of Lords. Now when you say you took a commission, what exactly is a commission? Uh, the commission is, is, is the formal document um, by which the Royal Commissioners are appointed uh, to give the approval, uh, the approbation of Her Majesty. And does the, does the Queen signify it in some way? The Queen signifies that. Now, unusually, because we've seen a couple of royal commissions in the last month, but this one will be chaired by the Lord Chancellor. The Lord Chancellor used to chair all royal commissions, but since the Lord Chancellor sat in the Commons, this is the only occasion on which the Lord Chancellor chairs the royal commission. And this is Robert Buckland, Secretary of State for Justice, and Lord Chancellor. So an MP in the House of Lords, Ian? Oh, well, yes, this being um, formal Commons business, uh, it's appropriate that the Lord Chancellor should preside. Black Rod makes her appearance at the bar of the House of Lords, and she joins the commissioners to receive their commands. And viewers to BBC Parliament have seen this scene quite a lot in the last few days, or last few weeks anyway. We had one prorogation went wrong, one prorogation went right, Let and now we have... Know 
that the Lord's Commissioners desire their immediate attendance in this House to hear the Commission read. And technically, the Royal Commission are not sitting in the House of Lords, are they? Uh, no, that's right. Um, uh, the wool sack and the uh, bench upon which the Royal Commissioners are sitting are without the House. Once again, five Royal Commissioners, although, of course, on the uh, prorogation that turned out to be unlawful, only three were prepared to attend. But we are back to five this time, and they are indeed Robert Buckland, MP, the Lord Chancellor, Lady Evans of Bowes Park, the Leader of the House of Lords and Lord Privy Seal, Lady Smith of Basildon, the Leader of the Opposition Peers, Lord de Lochia, Deputy Leader of the Liberal Democrat Peers, and Lord Judge who was indeed in a former life a judge, and he's the convener of the crossbench peers. Black Rod has been dispatched to the Commons, and she will issue the summons of the Royal Commission to the Commons to attend the House of Lords. How long did it take you to... You arrived at the Palace. How long till you headed back to Parliament with the signature of the... Um, I, d I don't recall precisely uh, the, the time, but uh, it, it was enough time for um, the Queen's private secretary to uh, take the formal documentation to the Queen for her approval. Phil House, the principal doorkeeper of the House of Lords, is waiting for Black Rod's arrival. And on duty there, you just saw Urbana Oyet. He is the brand new Sergeant at Arms. He's only just taken office and this is his first duty. Not today, thank you. It is Black Rod. Open the door. No. No milk today. <laughs> Black Rod. Announced by the principal doorkeeper, Black Rod, accompanied by the sergeant at arms, approaches the speaker elect. Mr. Speaker-elect and members of the House of Commons, the Lords, by virtue of Her Majesty's Commission, have been authorised to declare her approval of the new Speaker in the House of Peers and therefore desire the presence of this Honourable House in the House of Peers to hear the Commission read. I'm rather relieved that other people forget their lines as well. Um, very consoling, that. The Sergeant at Arms, now, watch the way he's holding the mace, because this is the only occasion on, watch on the, when the mace is held in this slightly odd, slanted position. Sir Lindsay Hoyle, now in mourning dress, accompanies Black Rod. Still, at this stage, the Speaker-elect. He says goodbye to a few people. Leader of the House of Commons and his shadow, and a, a motley selection of MPs who've stayed behind for the final end of this act play. And one clerk left behind. Back to the House of Lords, where they await the arrival of the Commons. And he's going to ask, for the, the Speaker-elect will ask for, essentially, uh, what will he say? He says, I, uh, the choice has fallen to me, and I hope I'm OK, really, doesn't he? That, that's right. Uh, and um, uh, just, just really um, laying claim um, uh, to the uh, privileges of the office. He does indeed, yes, he does say in the privileges of the office. Uh, when it's the opening of a new parliament, he actually asks for the traditional privileges of the House of Commons to be uh, continued, that the uh, royal permission should be given for those privileges. doesn't have to do that on this occasion because those privileges were sought at the beginning of this parliament, way back in 2017. This parliament has been one of the most lopsided there has ever been, because we started with the longest session of Parliament, two, two and a half years odd from 2017 
right up until September this year. And then, on the prorogation that was lawful, we started the second session, which has lasted a mere 21 days. So it's quite bizarre. The Speaker-elect arrives at the bar of the House of Lords, and it's doffing time. And I have to say, the Lord Chancellor, who hasn't done it uh, before in the last few weeks, he's an expert doffer. The other Royal Commissioners have been on parade. Oh, this is the third time we've seen them in recent weeks. I acquaint your Lordships that Her Majesty's faithful commons, in obedience to the Royal Command, have, in their exercise of their undoubted rights and privileges, proceed to the election of a Speaker, and that their choice has fallen on me. I therefore present myself at your Lordship's bar and submit myself with all humility for Her Majesty's gracious approbation. My Lords and Members of the House of Commons, it not being convenient to Her Majesty to be personally present here at this time, a commission has been issued under the Great Seal, commanding us and several other Lords therein named to notify and declare Her Majesty's approbation of the choice of her faithful commons of Sir Lindsay Hoyle to be their speaker. Which commission you will now hear read. Elizabeth II, by the grace of God of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland and of our other realms and territories Queen, Head of the Commonwealth, Defender of the Faith, to all to whom these presents shall come, a greeting. Whereas we did lately, for diverse, difficult and pressing affairs concerning us, the states and defence of our United Kingdom and the Church, ordain this our present Parliament to begin and be holden at our city of Westminster the 13th day of June in the 66th year of our reign, on which day our said Parliament was begun and holden and is there now holden, and whereas we have been informed that the lower house of our said Parliament have lately made choice of our beloved and faithful the Right Honourable Sir Lindsay Harvey Hoyle Knight in the room of our beloved and faithful John Simon Burko Esquire to be Speaker of the said lower house of our said Parliament, of which choice we are graciously pleased to approve and allow and confirm the same. And forasmuch as for diverse causes and considerations we cannot conveniently at this time be present in our royal person, in our said Parliament, know ye that we, trusting in the fidelity and care of the Most Reverend Father in God and our faithful Councillor Justin Portal, Archbishop of Canterbury, Primate of All England and Metropolitan, our well-beloved and faithful Councillors Robert James Buckland, Chancellor of Great Britain, Natalie Jessica, Baroness Evans of Bowes Park. Navnit, Lord Dalakia. Igor, Lord Judge. Angela Evans, Baroness Smith of Basildon. And other Lords of our Privy Council, by the tenor of these presents, do give and grant to them, or any three or more of them, full power in our name to declare and notify our royal approbation of the choice of the said Lindsay Harvey Hoyle to be Speaker of the said Lower House of our said Parliament and to allow and confirm the said Lindsay Harvey Hoyle to be Speaker of the said Lower House and to do all things in our said Parliament that may be necessary for declaring our said royal approbation, allowance and confirmation of the said Lindsay Harvey Hoyle to be Speaker of the said Lower House of our said Parliament, in witness whereof we have caused these our letters to be made patent. Witness ourself at Westminster the fourth day of November in the 68th year of our reign, by the Queen herself signed with her own hand. Sir Lindsay, 
we have it in command from Her Majesty to declare Her Majesty's entire confidence in your talents, diligence and sufficiency to fulfil the important duties of the High Office of Speaker of the House of Commons to which you have been chosen by that House. And in obedience to the commission which has been read and by virtue of the authority therein contained, we do declare Her Majesty's royal allowance and confirmation of you, sir, as Speaker of the House of Commons. Lords, I submit myself with all humility and gratitude to Her Majesty's royal will and pleasure. I pray that if, in the discharge of my duties and in the maintenance of the rights and privileges of the Commons, House of Parliament, I should inadvertently fall into error. It may be imputed to me alone and not to Her Majesty's faithful comments. So the old triple doff trick has been completed. Here's here's ring out. And what's impressive, I must say, Lord, uh, the Lord Chancellor has certainly mastered the art of balancing a tricorn hat on top of a full-bottomed wig, which I think is quite some party trick. Lord De Lockyer, who may have seen it, uh, rather enthusiastically into the doffing and um, managed to get another couple in when no one was looking. So, he is, Lindsay Hoyle is the Speaker of the House of Commons. And which of the, was that the, the bit that the reading clerk was reading, all that appointment of the Commission, was that what you took down to the palace? Yes, indeed. That's the uh, formal Royal Commission by letters patent, which was... Uh, embossed with the Great Seal of the Realm. So the Great Seal of the Realm is attached to this document? Yes, in its uh, wafer form, uh, authorising it's said to be a higher form of the Sovereign's will and pleasure. So how long did you have to write out the Commission document with the name of the winner, or did you find a way round that? Well, yes, in order that the um, both the Commons and the Lords should not be kept waiting, uh, two draft commissions were prepared uh, with the names of the final two contenders and uh, that uh, then enabled us to take uh, the one successful name down to the palace without any undue delay. So, so you had one in the name of um, John Burko and one in the name of Sir George Young. That's right. And you managed to take the right one down there. Indeed. Sergeant Arms and the Speaker return to the <laughs> Commons. Just one final formality and the Commons will adjourn. And tomorrow will be the final day of this Parliament. At 11.30 tomorrow, the new Speaker, accompanied by the Mace and the Sergeant, will process to the Commons in their first day in the job, but the last day of the second session, a remarkably short session, some would say the shortest session of Parliament that has ever been, and that will bring this Parliament to an end, which will be formally dissolved at one minute past midnight on Wednesday, the 6th of November. And the Commons has got business tomorrow. They are going to be looking at the historic institutional abuse Northern Ireland Bill, which provides for compensation payments to be made to survivors of abuse. And it's got to get through all its stages uh, tomorrow, and the Lords are dealing with the civil partnership opposite sex couples regulations and a debate on gambling. The Speaker takes the chair. For your order. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everybody. I have to report that this House has been in the House of Lords where Her Majesty has been pleased by Her Majesty's Commissioners to approve the choice made of myself for the Office of Speaker. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
My first duty to the House is to repeat my respectful acknowledgments and my grateful thanks for the great honour you have conferred upon me in placing me in the Chair and to renew the assurance of my entire devotion to the service of this House. Can I just personally say thank you, folks? I now call a whip to move the adjournment. Beg to adjourn, Mr. Spe Mr. Speaker. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Leader of the House, no better. The question is, this House to adjourn. As many of that opinion say, aye. aye. The eyes of it, the eyes of it. Order, order. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. <laughs> now, that has brought the proceedings to an end. Um, interestingly, that's sometimes the point at which the Commons asked for a peerage to be bestowed on the previous speaker. That didn't happen tonight. So, join BBC Parliament at 11.30 tomorrow for the final day of this session and this Parliament, which will then be dissolved. And you will have noticed that the date tomorrow is November the 5th, Guy Fawkes Day, the day on which Guy Fawkes attempted to blow up the Houses of, Common Houses of Parliament. I wonder if there is in any significance that the final day of this Parliament will be on Guy Fawkes Day. Well, it's an interesting commentary. <laughs> Such a diplomat. That's why he worked in uh, Parliament for all those years. Um, many thanks for joining us, for watching. Over the course of today, we've enjoyed bringing this whole event to you, and we look forward to seeing you, not just tomorrow, in our general election coverage... And the good news is we'll be l meeting the new parliament on December the 16th. And guess what? There'll be another royal commission to open the new parliament. So there's still more ceremony to come. But from BBC Parliament, thank you all for watching and a very good evening to you. <laughs>